Yeah, we're just... John English is one of our special guests tonight. You're watching After Dark, of course. They are the Riptides in 77 Sunset Strip. We're just trying to work out about the time that have been happening in our lives. I, I think it would be around about the time I was in the stables, but then shortly after went to work at the Marconi Club, where you've just come uh, yeah, from. Yeah, you've we just been doing it. That's right. And a beautiful place to work now, That's eh? fantastic, eh? You know, it's changed. It's changed so much. Can you there. remember it back in those days? Oh, well, it was like, uh, <laughs> it was like something from against the wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had the same era. It was, there was just this little shed. I think yeah. before you worked there with the interns, it was only a small shed. Yeah. And that is still there in the car park. That, that was the original That's Marconi right. Club. Yeah, it's a million dollars. Yeah, were the interns, were they the first band you ever worked with? No, I, I, the first band I worked with was a band called Zenith. But it was all the same area, yeah. you know, like our area, yeah, which is Fairfield, Cabramatta, Cabra, Liverpool. Da, 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 yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and Gene, well, Charlie, let's uh, tell the truth. Uh, you kill me. Charlie, Charlie <laughs> Silvester, Salvestrini. <laughs> well, he's real is he, now, he's now known, known as Gene, Gene Pearson, Pearson right? right? Had a band called Gene Chandler. Chandler and the, and the interns. And I, I sort of, I knew Peter Prezik. Yeah. Pep, the bass player, you see. Right. Or the rhythm guitar player. And I hooked up with him. Yeah. And then eventually, to cut a long story short, we, we, we got Sebastian Hardy going. But yeah. there was a, an interim period of uh, not very long in between then where we worked at like Marconi Club mm. and all over the shop there. All those areas. Yeah. A lot of other people, uh, other than yourself, have come out of that area and the Plasvik Brothers. Well, the, the Western um, Suburbs, eh, you know. John Paul Young. Yeah, well, going back before that, I mean, if you want to count the hostels and stuff, there was the Easy Beats. Easy Beats out of the hostel, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Just over that way. It's just uh, funny that it always seems to be those areas that, uh, at the risk of insulting anybody, it seems to be like, well, the lower middle class areas. Mm, because in England, the, the working class person is now where the groups are coming from. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And correct in, uh, in the 60s, I guess, too. Oh, for Beatles. sure. That's right. And it, was, as it, it was a time of great change, of course, as well, you know, uh, cultural change. Right. I mean, I can remember sort of running like a dog through Cowley Heights because I had long hair. You right. know? Oh, yes, you shouldn't have it there, yeah, right. in those right. days. That yeah. was disgusting. And you see them today, like the, the bank guys that work in banks, yeah. which you did, yeah. have hair longer than yeah. they were calling disgusting in those Guys days. going to school with beards and stuff. Mm. That was amazing. What other jobs did you do other than the banking? Oh, well, I was a uni mostly. I was one of these uh, um, trying to find something to do after school a little bit more respectful than being on the dole, so I went to university, which is only just an iota more respectable than being on the dole. Uh, <laughs> I noticed in your bio that it said you only lasted a year. You were going to be a school teacher, correct? Yeah, I got a teacher's college scholarship and uh, looked at myself in the mirror one day and tried to imagine myself as a teacher. Well, Walked out of the lecture and just kept walking into the bus, back to Cabramatta. Yeah. Good night. And that, is that when you went into the bank? Yeah, I just looking for money, really. I went into a bank for a while. Good place to find out. <laughs> it was great. They wouldn't give me any of that. No. Um, then just generally trolled about the joint. Just general jobs, you know, yeah. but mostly playing with the band all the time. What about in, in the biography that I read today, and I, it's something I didn't know, so we bring it up. Apparently you took a day off when the superstar job was advertised yeah. in the newspaper. Yeah. Is that correct? Tell yeah. us about that. Uh, I got the album. I, I, my granny sent the album out in... Uh, 69, I think it was. It was, it was as early as that right. that it was first released with Ian Gillen and Murray Head, yeah. that album. And I listened to it and thought it was great. We were even playing a few songs with the band. And uh, I saw that Harry and Miller had open auditions. So I went down during sort of, uh, it was actually, it wasn't, wasn't quite the day off. I knocked off at morning tea. Okay. So I was going for a walk and didn't come back. <laughs> you keep going a lot. No, I just walk out of place and keep going. Set the mind. See ya. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, I, I showed up at the... Uh, Audition and I had like the hair behind the ears yeah. and, the, yeah. and the tie and the rest of it, and there were all these like rejects from hair, and I just felt very silly indeed. And then I did the audition and split my trousers like right away. And PJ Fraley did. Yeah, oh, totally, yeah. yeah. So, but at, at that time, apparently they said to you, hey, you're good, we want you, but they hadn't told you what part. Oh, they, they no, they, they, they were far too cool for that. They were just saying, yes, um, we've got you on a recall, um, can you wait for five hours? So, so you never go back to the bank? <laughs> no, no, no. And uh, then, yes, look, we're interested. Uh, we, we're not quite sure. We've narrowed the field down to four and a half thousand. And uh, we'd like to... Uh, can you hang on by the phone for the next six weeks or whatever? Which is, well, you know the story. Yeah. So I did, naturally, you know. And then they finally said, we, 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 we're afraid we've got some bad news for you. 
uh, we don't want you to play the part of Jesus, but we think you'd be good for Judas. And I was expecting a role in the chorus, and I wanted right. Judas all along anyway. Beautiful. So I played it. I played it very well. I said, well, I'm very disappointed, you know, naturally. Um, but if you give me a lot of money, I'll be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and they sort of have. They compromise. They, yes, they compromise. <laughs> with the, just before we throw to a song, with the Judas thing, you were hung all the time. I mean, we did, we did a line on that years ago yeah, when yeah, we first did yeah. Sound Unlimited. But... <laughs> In the bio, it says that you actually did near hang yourself a few times. You had uh, yeah. burns from the rope. Oh, one stage. True? Well, with all of those, well, what they call, what the stunt people call gags, right. uh, there's always a, uh, a modicum of risk when you're doing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So they were devising different sort of flying harnesses. And this right. is specifically for anyone that ever saw Superstar. Mm -hmm. I used to get a note, a sort of rope around my neck and fly 60 feet in the air. Yeah. And uh, the, the original flying harness was made of canvas and, uh, and metal. And everything was, was double-checked, the tensile strength of the braking strain right. and the wire was, was 2,000 pounds, the whole thing. So they never checked the buckles on the harness. Right. And the second time I went up, both buckles broke. Wow. So I was actually sort of hanging on <laughs> like that. And screaming, and the director came back afterwards and said, don't scream too much, it frightens the kids. You <laughs> Your know? thought about this time was, this is a great job, I'm glad I got it. At the end of that. <laughs> well, when I got up the top, I thought, right, I think I'll just walk out the door and keep walking. Yeah. No, <laughs> but you didn't. No, I didn't. Thank God for that. <laughs> We've got uh, the album to talk about, and a whole lot of things. When Doug Ashton gets here, I want to ask you, and you can think about this one, but groupies, I know that you're a married man and everything, but the sort of problems they might give to performers and various other things like uh, right. public publishers, how much money they take, what they should take, what do you think, etc. Wow. But let's have a look at uh, Altered Images and then we'll have a look at Van Morrison, who I think you'll be right into. Certainly. Altered Images. Do let's, it. let's highlight a few songs, eh? We'll pick it up at JC Superstar and Make then we'll cry. end on beating the boards. <laughs> Here is John English on After Dark. Besides yourself, the big guy. 